there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got a lot of fun ideas for you today I also have a sweet friend joining in with me I'll be able to share those details with you a little bit later let's say it together what are we waiting for let's get started today we're going to be working on spring home decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies also stay with me I edited this video as much as I could but it's still a little long but I also think you're going to enjoy the results with that said, let's move on to project number one. For this project, we're gonna be using this wood bunny from Dollar Tree. What I've done is I've traced the wood bunny and I traced it a little bit shorter all the way around. And then as after I pinned it onto the fabric, I also traced it again one more time, a little bit shorter all the way around. So the end result as we cut it out of the fabric and then we recut it because we're gonna be using some felt from Dollar Tree. Our uh, fabric is going to be a little bit shorter on the wood and then our felt is going to be a little bit shorter than the fabric that we've cut out. So I hope that's understandable because we want the bunny to, we want the wood perimeter around the fabric of the bunny to show just like this. And then we want the felt to be a little bit smaller than the fabric. I've cut three layers of this felt from Dollar Tree because it's pretty thin and I want this layer to be kind of thick looking. But we want that to be a little bit shorter around as well so we can get a quilted look on our piece when we're all done. And this is what both pieces would look like. Okay, so just like that. I'm going to show you on the back side of the bunny so you can really see the contrast. You can use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue or hot glue gun or take it to the sewing machine. Now, you can skip this part totally. I just want to add the sewing onto it. I'm going ahead and sewing the felt to the fabric. Totally optional here because you can glue it all. But I just wanted that little bit of a quilting look. But if you're not a sewer, skip this part. And what you're going to do is just glue your felt to the back of the fabric for the bunny okay so that's a totally optional part and then what I want to do uh, is go around if you want to add this part it's optional too is I'm just kind of pulling on the threads around the fabric to give it a nice distressed look uh, against the wood on our bunny so it looked like this when we're all done and then I'm going ahead and sanding the wood around this bunny now later on you're going to see the outer perimeter of my bunny is a little bit different in color even though this is whitewashed it looked a little bluish against my fabric so after I had glued everything on and we're going through all these steps I decided I want to paint that perimeter white so I go with a little paintbrush painting around the fabric but then I also distress it as well so you've glued your uh, felt to your bunny fabric right if you didn't sew it and then you're going to go ahead and glue this whole ensemble down to the bunny just like this now you could leave it like this um, and don't do this next step but this is how you can get a quilted look if you're not a sewer um, and what you do is now you've got those long pieces hanging around that thread or around that felt right so go ahead and add glue around the perimeter down by the felt and then you just push your fabric down onto that glue and up against that felt all the way around so you're down onto your glue up against that felt and you kind of get that little bit of a quilted look. So see, you really didn't need the sewing because you're getting the quilted look this way, but it's just the option to add a little more texture, okay? So you're going to do this process all the way around. Perfect, just finishing up here. Looks really cute. And here in the next step is where you're gonna see um, I changed the background wood. See, it's a little bluish. Here's where I painted around the edges. I was able still to lift up the fabric a little bit with a small paintbrush, get around the edges, and then redistress it with a little bit of uh, sanding. And the paint I used was Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Paint. I'm gonna go ahead now and paint a couple of these beads that we're gonna use. I've just got them on a skewer here to kind of help hold them in place. Just a little light whitewash, that's all. Just want it to kind of match that paint of the, you know, wood on the bunny. But you could leave them plain if you want. Now, I've made a pom-pom here. It's already done. I use the yarn from Dollar Tree and also one of these uh, pom-pom makers. I got in a store, but I know you can find on Amazon and stuff, or there's lots of tutorials on YouTube how to make it without one of those. So, you know, your choice. I'm going to use some ribbon here that I got uh, from Walmart. I've made it into a bow, and I'm going to use a little bit of Excelsior here and a little bit of white twine. You can get that at Walmart as well. And I'm going to add 
got it in a bow and I'm going to add a bead to each end of the tails of the twine bow here. Set that aside for a little bit. We're going to go ahead and glue on our ribbon bow here. I love this ribbon. I got it like Christmas time at Walmart. I picked up like five rolls of it. It's the perfect off-white color. Add the Excelsior on top and then add our little twine bow in the center and uh, then still haven't tied those beads in. I've got some really thin, thin twine and a button here and the button has four holes through it. So I'm just kind of going through and threading the twine in a crisscross fashion through the holes of the button and then I'll tie it in a little bitty bow. We're gonna add this for a little decor as well. Super cute. We're just about done with this bunny. And then of course I'll cut the tails a little shorter now this wood heart was left over from one of my recent spring videos that was made from these wood ornaments at Dollar Tree. I painted it, distressed the edges, added a vinyl quote. I had both of these left, decided not to use it. I'll make sure the link's in the description box for you. So we are going to use these on our projects today. I'm just adding a bulb pin. You can get these, a bulb safety pin. You can get these from the sewing section Walmart. Just gonna add it to the twine bow on the front of our button. And then we're gonna go ahead now and make our knots in the end of our tails on our white twine bows so that our beads don't fall off. Make our little knot and cut off the excess. I like to make one a little longer than the other just for decorative touch. And then we're going to go ahead and glue our little button ensemble here right on top. And then we're going to go ahead and glue down our little pom-pom ball for our tail. And once I do that, this project is complete. Before we move on to project number two, joining me today to bring you all lots of creative inspiration is my sweet sister and friend in Jesus Christ, Wendy, who is White Sparrow living here on YouTube. I can't imagine that you all don't know her, but just in case, I can't also say enough about her. Her sweet spirit, her infectious friendly attitude, her zest for life. Um, I just love her to bits and pieces. She creates all things beautiful from the heart and how she dreams up her projects just amaze me. Now, I got a sneak peek at one of her projects and you guys are going to want to run over to her video and see what she came up with, but you know, maybe wait until you finish watching my first. <laughs> with that giggled about, let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm going to use this sign that I got at Dollar Tree and one of these wood arrows from Dollar Tree. almost called it a heart. And you can use one of these wood planks from Dollar Tree. I've got these ones from Hobby Lobby that are just a little bit shorter. They're about five inches uh, tall, but you can use one of these from the longer ones from Dollar Tree, of course, cut it down. And then the first thing I'm going to do is remove this little top piece here and save it because we will reuse it. Now the bottom part of the sign is painted, but this top part has paper on it. So I'm going to peel off as much paper as I can around the perimeter. See here, and I sand a little bit, and I went in and sanded around the edges of this as well, so it'll make it a little bit easier. I'll be covering Debbie's Design Diary DIY white swan chalk paint, a little bit easier to paint over um, if it's sanded. You know, you don't have to try and paint over that darker color that's already on the sign. Now, I've got a little heart up there above the sign. It's one of those wood hearts from, you know, the woods hearts I just showed you in the uh, previous project, but I end up switching to a bigger heart. Okay, so you're going to want a bigger heart, one of the bigger hearts from those wood heart collections or whatever hearts you have, but a little bit bigger. You'll see in the end what it looks like. Just painting around the edges of everything because we are going to cover it. Now for this bottom portion, I have to use two 12 by 12 sheets of paper. And just a little hint, I usually will try to choose paper when I have to do this, like the stripe, as you can see here. When it's together, you can't see the seam. So try to choose a paper, if you want, that you just, you know, the seam is undetectable. It makes it nicer and looks 
like one large piece of paper. And then I've cut all my papers down for all the rest of my pieces. I cut them all about an eighth of an inch short all the way around. I traced all my pieces and then I uh, cut them an eighth inch shorter. Now I'm going to use this We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper. I picked this up in the store, but I think they have them on Amazon because this wood sign I'm using here is rounded. So I'm going to use the quarter inch size and round the corners. And then on the larger sign, you can also see it's rounded. I'm going to use the half inch size. So this punch has a half inch and a quarter inch rounder on each side. Makes it nice and easy. And then I'm going to flip this paper over. You can see it's double sided. And I've got some uh, double sided tape here I love to use. Dollar Tree does have some here. It's just not as sticky, but certainly usable in this situation. But I'm going to cut a piece off to put my seams together. And since it's double sided, it will help us kind of gluing as well. I'm going to go ahead and run all my papers through my sewing machine. I love to do this. I get a lot of questions. I sew on it just like I'm sewing on fabric. I use a size 10 or 11 needle, depending on what the manufacturer has in the package. My stitch length is set on four. Uh, my tension set on four and here's what it looks like. I just love to add the subtle little texture to it. Add more texture, open your scissors, take the scissor blades and scrape along the edges of all your paper and that kind of gives it a nice rustic look to it. Now both of these are optional. You certainly don't need them, but I just like to add that fun detail to it. I think it looks great. Gives us our farmhouse rustic kind of feel. Going ahead and adding our fabric tack glue to the back of our piece and lifting up the cover on that double sided tape so it reveals that little bit more gluing and then we're going to go ahead and put this down onto our sign. Perfect. I've already got the back done. I did it off camera. White card stock. And then we'll go ahead and glue all the rest of the pieces onto our, uh, all the rest of the paper onto our pieces. I love the colors I chose for this. Um, I kind of just love those grays and kind of aqua tones. Once I get this on, we're going to go ahead and add a little more texture by splattering on some watered down uh, white swan chalk paint. I like to take my fan brush. I'll dip it into that watered down paint and then I'll tap off the excess onto paper and then I just tap my finger on that fan brush to give us some small little splatters. Now for the writing on all of this, I do have an electronic cutting machine so I cut it out uh, using my Cricut machine. If you don't have that, you could of course use letter stickers or if you have beautiful handwriting or way back even before you cut your paper to fit your wood pieces, Use like Microsoft Word or Microsoft Publisher on your computer, print it out, and then trace your paper and cut it out, and then your writing is already on your paper. Okay, so those are some options for you. I'll make sure I have the um, fonts that I used in the description box, of course. Love this font used for Bunny Trail. It's a weird name. It's called Chris Master, but I love the little hearts over the eyes. So Cottontail Farms, of course, and then the rest of it will say this way to the bunny trail. Now, what I want to do coming up here is I have, this is called, let me back up. This is our We Are Memory Keepers hole punch, right? It's a little bit, um, the spacing there is a little bit short. So I have a We Are Memory Keepers hole punch, but it's called a big bite. So it, the spacing here is wider and it has a longer reach. Okay, so you can find these on Amazon. They'd probably be a little more expensive, of course, but definitely well worth it. I pull it out every once in a while. I'll punch my holes in this sign because I want to curl up some wire here. We're going to use some of this wire from Dollar Tree, cut a couple of pieces, just nice long pieces, or probably eight inches or so. A couple more pieces of this double-sided tape. And we're going to wrap it around a paintbrush here, and we're going to leave a little long tail on it. And then we're going to put it through the holes on the sign so it looks like we kind of, you know, uh, wired this uh, arrow onto a signpost basically. Just putting it through like this, both sides, flip it over, and then we use that double sided tape to get that on there. Of course, we'll peel that up later. It'll give us some additional gluing, peel up the top layer. Now, here's part I've got the bigger heart, and I don't know where the filming went to this other little sign, but this is the this way to the part of the sign. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I mean, you saw me rub on the other two, but you know, that's part of the quote. Don't know where it went, but there it is for you. <laughs> and we're just gonna take this heart and glue it halfway on to the sign. Then we're gonna glue this Cottontail Farms up on here. And then I'm gonna use some of these little clamps from Dollar Tree, just kind of help hold it in place while we get the other uh, sign pieces onto this bigger sign. So Cottontail Farms will glue down the this way to the 
That's kind of funny to say. And then we'll take that covering off that double sticky tape and we'll glue this part down. And then of course I'll remove the clamps. And once I do that, this project is complete. Let's move on to our last project number three. Now this one's got a lot of steps, but I feel it's still really easy to put together. So for this project, you need two of these wood eggs from Dollar Tree. We're gonna need some more yarn because we're gonna make another little pom-pom like in our first project. I'm gonna use these little heart picks I got at Valentine's, but any little tiny heart will work. We're gonna use it for a little nose, just like we've done in a previous video. And then I've got some fabric down here. Now, essentially, I've got from Walmart like this one and the other ones for like Hobby Lobby. You need three patterns and then one piece of like muslin or other cream colored fabric. If you want different patterns, you could just do all one color and then a piece of muslin for the ears. So you've got some options. So what I've done here is I traced around it this egg shape. I didn't cut it short like I normally do. I traced around it completely. And what you're going to want to do is place it onto your fabric that you're going to use for the body. Our egg is going to become our bunny body and you're going to, you just need to cut one piece. Trace around it, cut a piece. And then I have just free handed some ears here. They're about five inches tall, about two inches at the top part in width and about one inch at the bottom part in width. You're gonna need to cut, uh, what I did is two pieces of muslin for the top and then two pieces of the polka dot material for the bottom. Okay, so you need four pieces for your ears if you're using all one color. The legs I've already cut, they're about eight inches tall, about one and a quarter inches wide. You're gonna need four pieces here. All right, then I just made some little shoes. They're probably about two inches long. The tallest end is about one and a quarter and the shortest end is about one quarter. Just made like some little shoes, okay? Cut it out of whatever fabric you wanna use here. You're gonna need four pieces. So four pieces for your ears, four pieces for your legs, four pieces for your shoes, one piece for your body, okay? Getting everything ready here. This is kind of what it's gonna look like. I've got my ears. Now, my ears i've got two pieces of one color fabric on the back and two pieces of one color fabric on the front so four pieces so essentially we've got our ears our body our legs and our two feet okay here's the yarn again showing you that and i've already made my little pom-pom uh, tail but of course i'm going to trim that all up off camera make it look pretty i retraced the egg shape again and i made this like a little stencil i cut about one inch circle in diameter on each side to help us to make some little cheeks so you're going to lay it down like this so it covers the whole fabric and leaves only the opening here in just a minute to make some cheeks now i've decided we need some felt for this project all i have is black left i wanted white from dollar tree so i'm using my walmart felt don't worry about everything I'm showing here. Let's just focus on the felt for a minute. So you're gonna need two pieces of felt, one per each leg. And remember the leg is about eight by one and a quarter inches. So cut your felt about six inches long, one inch wide. And then you're gonna need two pieces of felt for your shoe. So you can see how it is there. Just cut it a little bit shorter all the way around. And don't worry, we'll go through this layering process again in a minute. And then we're gonna want two pieces of felt for each ear so four pieces of felt total okay and then you want to cut it a little shorter around the ear but also about an inch so short in length so when we go to sandwich our ear here that bottom piece doesn't have any felt so that the fabric is really thin because we're going to sandwich that between that wood so we want it really thin there so i've got my fabric i'm going to lay on the top of the egg here for our body. What I've done is cut a piece of felt here that I'll end up gluing to the wood and I'm gonna place a nice poof of batting here onto that felt and then I'm gonna glue my fabric onto that felt around the perimeter of that batting so it looks nice and poofy. If you don't wanna do this, do like we did in the first project, cut a piece of felt shorter than your fabric and then you'll glue that onto the wood and then you'll glue the fabric around that felt pushing up against the side. 
to give you that quilted look. So now what I've got here is my wood I've taped together. I found the center so that the both pieces of wood were even together at the bottom and then I sand it a little bit just so it'll set up and then when we go to add our tail later it will give us some stability to set up as well. So now I'm going to take Waverly Antique Wax. I've mixed it with some water here, made it nice and runny. We're going to use it like a stain. This is light colored wood so I want to stain around the perimeter first because I'm going to use a light colored paint over the top of this and that way when I go to distress it um, you'll see that uh, stain kind of poking through a little bit. Otherwise, you don't really see the wood below it, so why distress it? So I like to add that stain first when it's light-colored wood, like I said. Paint on top with that light-colored paint, and you get that nice distress look. You kind of see the two colors. So here they are. I've just distressed a little bit. I didn't paint the inside fully because we're going to glue it together just like this. I think it looks nice. Now we're going to start to assemble. You can use your glue gun. You can use the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, or you can sew it with the sewing machine like I'm going to do. We're going to start with our legs. The first thing I'm going to do, if you're a gluer, just go ahead and glue this felt. I'm going to just place one bead down the center first because I'm sewing it. I'm just tacking it in place. But you're going to just kind of glue that felt, if you're a gluer, to your fabric. Again, I'm tacking it down on the other side because I'm going to sew around the perimeter. Okay, I'm going to do it to both pieces. And remember, we want the top and bottom edge not to have any felt. We're gluing this kind of gluing this kind of down in the center. Okay. If you're a gluer, you're just going to go glue that felt in, and then you're going to glue all the way around all the edges, just so you seal everything up. Okay. Just like that. Like I said, I'm going to take mine to the sewing machine. Again, this just kind of gives it a little more of a country look totally optional. I try to design these so you can glue or sew as you see here. You can do that for both legs. Now let's go to the ears. I'm going to use some of this wire and get it at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to shape it and uh, actually I think I got it mine at Walmart. You can use wire from Dollar Tree. I'm going to shape it into an ear shape and on one piece of the felt, remember we cut two for each ear, I'm going to glue this wire right onto that felt. And then I'm going to add more glue and then glue the other piece of felt over both of those. Just like that. We're going to sandwich that wire right in between. Okay. I want to do this. You don't have to add wire, but I wanted to make the uh, ears so we could curl them up if we wanted to. Sandwich that wire and then, of course, cut off your excess wire at the end. We don't need that. Okay. And then go ahead and sandwich that felt in between your two ears. If you're a hot gluer, you can just glue it all the way around, sandwich that in, okay? I'm gonna take mine to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew that in. Couple options for you. Perfect, here's what it looks like sewn. Now we're gonna go into building our legs. So what we're gonna do is sandwich our leg. It's already glued or sewn and ready to go. We're gonna sandwich it just about an inch of it. We're gonna put it right at the top of our rounded part of our shoe. Then we're gonna add our little piece of felt in here. Again, if you're a gluer, just glue all this in. I'm just tacking this down because I'm gonna sew around it. Add your felt, and then you're gonna add your other little leg. Your other little leg, you're gonna add your other little shoe right on top. Just like that. We're gonna do this for both legs. When I was assembling this one, I went to go put the top layer on. I got my leg in, I got my felt on, and my top layer. I'm like, how come my piece of fabric's backwards? And I realized I put the same piece of fabric on both sides, but I fixed it. So you, you've got your uh, shoes all glued in. I'm taking my shoes to the sewing machine. I keep jumbling my words because I just don't want to miss steps. I'm trying to think 10 steps ahead for you so I don't miss any steps explaining it to you. Here's what it looks like. Everything's all sewn in together. Looks really cute or glued together. Now I want to go ahead and distress around all my fabric just like we did on the first bunny. Just pulling on all around the edges of all the pieces. The body, the ears, the legs, the little shoes, everything. You could skip this part if you want. I think that looks really cute and distressed. Now we're back to our template again. I already tried it once, so you see pink paint on there. If you don't want to do this option, you can use a little uh, 
sponge, you know, daubing brush and just kind of use the templates to daub the paint on. But I am taking my little fan brush and adding my little splatters to the center of our little template or stencil here, just to kind of keep it in a round circle. It won't look like much till we get everything on, but you'll see how it looks. Now I'm going to use little beads here. I'm going to sew them in, but you could totally use like a Sharpie marker or you could use the end of a paintbrush, dip it in some black paint, and then just kind of, you know, dip your eyes on. I've got my little heart nose here ready from that pick. I took the little end off of it. Again, if you have just a different uh, heart, you don't have those picks, that's ready to go. You can paint it pink. You can glue these beads on if you decide to use beads. I know that Walmart has little things of black beads for a couple of bucks. You get like hundreds of them in a little container they will last you forever and so I'm just sewing my little eyes on here and I am sewing them lopsided that's how I want it you can see my little splattered cheeks don't look like much now but it will so now we're going to work on top we're going to start to get our belly on now remember if you want to go that route glue your felt on and your fabric over the top push up against the sides I'm going this route I've glued my felt on and now I'm going to glue my little poof batting here onto the center and then squishing it into the center so I can get some glue on to that batting and then I'm going to go ahead and push down around the edges of my fabric onto the batting and off camera I don't know if you can see it but around that piece of fabric that's my body I sewed around that just to give it some texture, but you totally don't have to do that. Just to go in with the sewn look on the eggs. You can kind of see that sewn look. But see here how I, all I did was cover that batting, okay? That's ready to go. Everything's glued on. I'm going to go ahead and use this white chalk paint. The same white chalk paint we used to cover the wood, and I'm just going to kind of whitewash these beads again, just like we did in the first project. Got it on a skewer here. It's easier for kind of whitewashing. And then I've got a little flower button here. I'm just whitewashing it a little bit. Just some dry paint on a brush. And now I'm adding some thin twine through the button. I'm going to tie a little bow here. We're going to add this onto our ear. Cutting the tails a little short. Just like that. Looks super cute. And now I'm going to go ahead and thread these beads onto our twine. Not going to knot it yet. Set it aside. Here comes our happy. Remember from the first project, we used spring. We're going to use the happy now. Some Excelsior for some whiskers and our little heart for our nose. So we're going to glue our Excelsior on here. You can use raffia here too. It would look super cute. Glue our little heart nose on here right in the center. And now you can really see the cheeks when I bring it up to you. You'll see the cheeks here in just a minute. Now we're going to glue down our stuff in between our wood. So here's why we didn't want felt here because we want this nice and thin. So go ahead and glue your ears down onto your wood at the top. You might have to overlap it a little bit like you see here. And then same thing with your legs. Go ahead and glue those on. You got about an inch of fabric of your legs and your ears onto your wood and then go ahead and glue your wood piece down just like this. Okay. I'm going to clamp it later. I'll, I'll end up showing you that. Another bulb pin. going to run it through that heart. And then I've got some thin twine here I've tied into a bow. And we're going back to our thicker white twine. Again, this is the white twine you get from Walmart. And I'm just going to tie a knot at the end of our bead again. Remember, so our bead doesn't fall off. Just kind of discerning the link I want here. And now this is why we put the wire in. See, we can bend our cute little ears. Thought that would be fun. And then I'm going to glue my little button onto one ear. And now we're going to go ahead and glue our little twine bow. I'm just going to kind of come off to the side here a little bit. And then we're going to glue the other thinner twine on top. And then we're going to add our happy here. The little safety pin, the bulb safety pin. Now here's where you can see I've added the clamps off camera because I want to make sure that those two egg pieces go nice and tight against our fabric. We're going to go ahead and glue our little pom-pom ball tail onto the back of our bunny. Of course, I'll remove the clamps off camera. And believe it or not, through a lot of steps, our easy project is now complete. Woo-woo!
I hope you like how all the projects turned out today. I think everything turned out so, like, rustic and farmhouse cute. I just can't stand it. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below, and you know the drill. Let me know which project was your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up. And if you're coming over from Wendy's channel, welcome. I hope you like what you saw here today as well. And then maybe if you just wandered in and wanted to see what kind of crafty fun we're doing over here, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is welcome. <laughs> but before you click off, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Thank you again, my sweet Wendy, for joining in in this inspirational, crafty fun. Everybody, remember, I will have her links in my description box for her video and her main channel page. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. When it seems like you just can't handle it anymore, you've had enough. You don't have the strength to fight anymore. You've cried. You've been angry. You've tried with your best arguments to find favor, given your best case points hoping to get your answer that you've waited so long for and nothing seems to be happening. And you feel like your faith is weak and why fight anymore? It's just no use. It's exactly at this point when you need to continue with your knees bent in prayer and your hands raised to God in worship. Because it's here that the enemy feels like he's won. But it's here where the enemy can be defeated. It's the only way he can be defeated. No victory has ever been won apart from prayer and praise. Stay on your knees and pray it through. Find the strength in Jesus to keep fighting. The victory has already been won, and now it's yours for the blessing. The road may be long and hard, but fear not. Jesus will renew your strength. He has overcome. He's at your side holding you up. Keep your faith and keep fighting. You never know at what moment God will say, now is your time. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.